bonjour and welcome to all you comic book geeks, you comic book readers and comic book collectors. But this one, you know what it is. You know why you're here. For the top 10 of this week's releases. And although it wasn't the biggest week in recent times, I've got to say I struggled to condense it down to my top 10. There were so many good books, but what, what I've tried to do, and bear with me for just a minute or two, because what I've tried to do is condense it down and try and make it, apart from that there are going to be old favourites like World's Finest in there, there's going to be Red Coat and there's going to be old Max Men. But anyway, I, I, I couldn't include Superman, uh, Napalm Lullaby, Spectacular Spider-Man, on and on and on, because we have to maintain, we have to, don't we? There has to be some decorum and some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, you know, I always forget a word. Um, discipline. There has to be some discipline with this stuff. I know we're all enjoying ourselves reading comics, and I know while I'm on that subject, welcome back if you're here from Fred's, Ear, I can hear myself. Oh, I can hear myself. Ears. Oh, anyway, <sighs> welcome back. If you are a subscriber, someone who's commented on one of my videos, who's we're, we're getting involved and over at Threads, and you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to gush about Threads for thirty seconds. All you guys and girls over there that are, that are getting into it with me on comics. I love you all. And if you've come over here and you've given me a thumbs up and a comment, I love the whole thing. And this is about positivity. There are plenty of naysayers, so let them stay where they are. Let them just stay in their little cave and troll about how crap comics are. And don't get me wrong, not every comic that is published is good. But let's talk about the good stuff. Let's, let's, let's cheer it. Anyway, it's one for the independents, I think, this week. And particularly British creators as well. So, yay. Go England. Remind Reminds me of like the late late 80s, early 90s, early Vertigo days, because Sam Man's here. We've got Phil Weston and we've got the guy who'd done um, Umbrella Academy with his new, with his new comic. Um, anyway, shall we get on with it? And before I do, I'm just going to remind you about cover of the week. So if it's your first time here, right at the end of the video, if you love your comics and you're of a kind of, I don't know how many people are of a certain age, the same as me, you know, because we are all dying out, aren't we? <laughs> uh, gone too soon. Anyway, at the end of this video, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Imagining that we only had pocket money. Do you remember when you had pocket money, but you could only afford like one comic? Imagine those. Because you had to buy a lolly or you had to buy sweets or you had to buy, a, you know, an Airfix model. That's one for the English fans. Um, or you had to buy an action figure. Whatever you had to do with your money. But anyway, you had money for at least one. And when you walked towards the spinner rack or the, the news agent or drugstore shelf, wherever you was was placed in this scenario, it was the cover that sucked you in like that proverbial tr uh, tractor beam. So we do that right at the end of the video. It's all going to be chapterized so that if you haven't got these, because I know that different people get their comics in different formats now, so you might not be as eager as I am and I'll pick them up every, every the, 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 you know, I'm at the door. I'm looking through the window of the comic book, my LCS. I'm looking through the window on a Wednesday morning and I can't wait. I can't wait. But I know that not everyone can do that. So if you haven't read some of these comics, the, uh, the spoilers are going to be more in the deep dive on my top five. But I've got a top ten. So I've got a deep dive on the top five, which I will show you what I'm going to do. So you know that after the scroll, that is the delight of the deep dive. And then I'm, there, there's five also rands. Um, no, six also rands because I've got a little cheat. I've got a little cheat. So it's it's still the top ten of comics, but I've got a, I've got a 
kind of collected edition graphic novel trade paperback whatever we all want to call it what's the other one um what's the other word we're all calling it now Om omnibus but it's not really an omnibus because it only collects one little story i'm going to go on with it right i'm going to start off with phoenix an unexpected treat i've got i've got to say i didn't expect this i'm really really coming at these new xbooks with a, a heavy dose of skepticism i really am but that where it went off off piece like ultimate x-men's doing and that's going to be in my also hands but where they where marvel were trying to do they, they are trying to do different things with the x-men that's what i will say so if you're like me and you missed the krakow a bit i, I did i'm sorry missed that whole thing um and you want to get back into the X-Men and you don't want to get 18 years worth of omnibuses or, you know, and, you know, get involved with Hickman's mind games. Yeah, I think they're doing a good job of just getting us back on board. That that was, uh, yeah, an, un an un unexpected treat. Staying on the traditional, th th this is no surprise if you are a viewer of my channel, it's just right it's just great I, I can't not include it i can't i can't not do it and every time nick Klein's on the artwork it is the first book i go to guaranteed even on a week like this like i'm saying where where the, the, there are classics are plenty um it's, it's just the first book i read it's just an e it's an easy read but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean it isn't any good it's just just oh and oh, look at that! I couldn't resist that cover. And I didn't fall in love with this character through the books. It was through the comics. Do you remember uh, Pacific Comics way back when? And it's P. Craig Russell. That's when I mean, Roy Thomas doing the writing, P. Craig Russell doing adaptions of the books. Um, I don't know where we are. I don't know if this is adapting a book or just telling us a new story. Do you know what? I'm beyond researching all of that now. I, tr I tried getting, if anyone knows actually, please leave me a comment, because what I wanted to do was get all the Elric books, once upon a time, like a year or two ago, I wanted to get all the Elric books, and I thought, someone somewhere must have done volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of Michael Moorcock's Elric. Yeah, you try. You try doing it, unless someone's released it, but let me know, because I will be. And keeping on a literary theme, this continues to be a great read. I haven't read, haven't read the books. Didn't like the Netflix show right from right from the first episode. Apart from one great fight scene, I love uh, Cavill. I, I just thought it was lame. This is not lame in any sense of the word. It really isn't, and I, I imagine that's how that they that's how the original uh, author would have wanted his work to be adapted. Spot on, that. <laughs> Something else spot on. Here we go for the Brits. So I spur you up. I mean, I don't know if, if Aaron Campbell actually is, is British. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not about Brits and anyone else. But again, I wish they could keep this team on an ongoing. Or, failing that, find an equal team and you swap them out because I'm going to do this is this has prompted me I did buy the first original hundred issues of Hellblazer I had them I bought them as they come out but anyway blah blah but what I'm going to do is a video this this this, this has provoked me into doing a little Hellblazer first hundred issues video which I will be doing but this is the best iteration of the character since the very very early days uh, for me since jamie delano it was jamie delano and then say 70 percent jamie delano 30 percent garth ennis that defined the character of hellblazer and spurrier as, as he hasn't redefined it but he's just used the character to such great effect uh, with aaron campbell aaron campbell's artwork is he's, 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 he's spot on with that Book of the week, guys. <laughs> Book of the week is this unexpected surprise. 
and this is thanks to Paul. Where I get my, my LCS, where I get all my brand new comics from, Comics and Fantasy in Hornchurch in Essex. Hello, Paul. And it was thanks to Paul that said, Roy, this is a bit of you. Well, no, he actually said Geeky Old Hog. Because no one knows my real name. No, it's too late now for that, isn't it? He said, Roy, like, get, get this. And do you know what? Mad as the proverbial bag proverbial frogs a wonderful so it's surreal it, it, <laughs> if Monty Python wrote comics mixed in with the goodies and this is really really British um, uh, references now yeah anyway a very a surrealistic a surrealistic fever dream is how I'm describing that and that's my book of the week. And you, you wait till you see Phil Weston's artwork. Absolutely gorgeous. There are some brilliant artists around. How anyone can choose to, to waste their time talking about the bad. Because there will always be bad. There'll be smelly comics. Always. There'll be smelly books. There'll be smelly TV and smelly films. Right? But how you can avoid all of this... To talk about that, I don't know. And come on, sorry. I apologise, sorry. Every issue of this that comes out, as long as Wade and Mora are on this book, and it's still we're still in the fifth with all the fifth dimension characters, and you know, if it's your first time here, you are going to have to wade through what see what I did there? You're gonna to have to wade through all my videos where I'm where I gush about this book. This is the best superhero book by a long way at the moment I've got I've got a say and it's DC <sighs> you know that's if we don't class the Hulk as a superhero because we can't really can we do we put him in the superhero mold because Marvel Marvel haven't got anything that comes anywhere near it not not from I'm not saying everything Marvel superhero is, is, is poo but what I'm saying is that is so head and shoulders above everything else with just great stories that you, you just can't wait to get into them. You can't. And what's happening next? And what's the next issue? And oh yeah. Yeah. Top team on that. Top team. And full credit. Yeah, with issue 29 now. I've, I don't know how many more issues. And that will stand the test uh, the, the, the way the more are going to be on. That will stand the test of time in years to come. It will be the Wade Mora run on World's Finest. Superb. I've got to, I've got to mention this as all... Again, you know, these are my honourable mentions, my also-rans. These are just top comics, guys. These are just top comics. This will make... A, this, this one will make a great easy read if you, if you like picking up the trades. Uh, yeah, wait for... Yeah, wait for another couple of issues. All of the Ghost Machine stuff is awesome. I know I've said it before. And I know I've said this before as well. This is a beautiful take. I, I, it, I'm not sure if, if X-Men, the X-Men title on the cover is, is very tenuous. But I love Peach Momoko. And we're back to that bag of frogs again. Here they are again. Because it is. It is. But they're not trying to redefine the X-Men with that one. Maybe with all those new X-Books that are coming out, you know, the blah, blah, and blah, blah, X-Men, and blah, X, blah, X, blah, you know, post Krakoa, maybe. But not with that one. They're just going, wee. Another unexpected delight, and... The thing that made me get this was uh, Mark Silvestri, who was one of the original uh, co-creators. Yeah, yeah, co now, for me, it will always be Michael Turner. Right? On this and Fathom and a, a couple of other things he did, Michael Turner, for me, a bit like with Danger Girl and J. Scott Campbell, there was a moment in time, wasn't there, where he was all into the little girly art, you know, Alongside Dave Stevens, 
I'm, I'm just, but no, Dave Stevens kind of, he was pre image, wasn't he? So yeah, no, you can't involve Dave Stevens in that. But anyway, I digress. Silvestri, J. Scott Campbell, and a couple of others at Image were creating really groundbreaking stuff at the time. You know, we talked about the 90s, which was mental for comics. And I did, again, I had a heavy, I had a sceptical look on my face when I went to the shelf and flicked through it. And I thought, oh, Silvestri, you look through the credits, you think, hmm. Yeah, mm, edited by Mark Silvestri. Mm, but, you know, I haven't heard of any of the creators. Anyway, well worth it. If you like this kind of shtick, um, they've done a great job. And this is a reboot. This, that, that's, that's, that's just a, a, a pure reboot. So I, I did I did enjoy that. Oh, and this is finished, but it was good. Five issues, guys. If you haven't picked it up, um, get the trade, do yourself a favour, get the trade, it gets, oh, what I should be doing is, um, what I really should be doing is a bag of frogs score, so how mad, <laughs> out of a scale of five bags of frogs, <laughs> how bonkers are these storylines, well this one, in issues three and four, so this is just wrapping things up, but issues three and four, if I was going to mark it out of five bags of frogs, it was fully five. <laughs> issues three and four. It, a pure delight, a pure a sci-fi, an anthropomorphic, I don't know how I keep getting that word right, a pure, a, a very hardcore, sci-fi story but with so much heart because of because of the animals a couple of dogs and a cat uh that that, that you follow the story through their eyes it's the, the humans that haven't got a lot haven't got a lot to do with it it's all down to the animals so that was my top 10 that was my little five that's my little five also rands just all good comics just 10 great comics so beware after the the coming scroll uh for spoilers on my top five because I'm going to do a nice deep dive we're going to look at the artwork because it's all gorgeous it's beautiful stuff but before I go I know this is a new one just a little cheat this and I don't know if anyone outside England is aware of Charlie's War and if you're not I did a whole video on it it's a World War One story written by Pat Mills and, and drawn exquisitely by Joe Kokohan back in the, would it have been the mid, yeah, mid 80s, Charlie's War. And it was the, it was the anti-war story to end all war stories uh, by Pat Mills. But what this one did, because Garth Ennis for me at the moment, um, don't get me wrong, big fan. But a lot of his stuff, like the, the Get Fury thing at the moment, he, he is dialing it in now, I think. He needs he needs something to really... Like when he got his hands on Hellblazer back in the day, Garth Ennis, and kind of almost use it as a template. And I will talk about this in my Hellblazer video. But he did use it as a template for Jesse on The Preacher. I'm not saying Garth Ennis... No, on, on, in no way am I saying he's, he's a bad writer, but... And maybe they eat, he's like comfort food for comic readers because you know what you're getting. But with this one, I didn't expect it to be um, a, little, a, little, a little bit more nuanced than I thought it was going to be. But anyway, it's a cross between Rogue Trooper and Charlie's War because basically they use this tenuous black hole uh, motif to send him back in time to World War One, and he meets a group of but I really enjoyed it because I love Charlie's War so much it stopped just short of being a homage and I think if Rebellion were a bit braver they could have inserted this they could have taken us back in time and they could have had Rogue meet Charlie they could have done it but, but the end there are certain things that are going to resonate in this 
And that's where, that, this is what I mean about not Gar Finnis being a, a, a great writer. He did, there are elements of it in things that happen to the characters that he probably couldn't do within the constraints of Charlie's War. So, yeah, sorry, my I've had a thought bubble that I had to work through via you. I won't edit it out, because you know I don't edit it out. So, anyway, join me after the scroll for the deep dive on the top five, and if you dare, join me. I'll double dare you, double dare you all, to join me for the cover of the week, and let me know if you disagree. There, there are so many people agreeing and liking, and you know I love you all. <laughs> you know I'm only joking. But you agree, and no, come on, disagree. What was your cover of the week? Tell me. Tell me in the comments, or tell me on threads. Say, no, you madman. No, that wasn't the cover that, that, that grabbed my attention, just because that character had their bits out. No, this was the one I wanted. This was the one I enjoyed. Anyway, after the scroll, deep dive on the top five. Right, so, okay, guys, here's the one that was the surprise of the week. I know they're doing all the new titles, and I am, I'm determined to find my way back in uh, to the X-Men, but I have had a very... I've got, I've got a cynical, a very so a, a very cynical outlook on whether or not Marvel can get me back into the X Men, not as a new reader, but as a as an absentee. <laughs> um, you know, getting back. But what I didn't expect was this: uh, Stephanie Phillips, the artist, uh, Alessandro Mir Miracolo, um, and and David Curio on, on the colouring. What they've done here is they're weaving a cosmic tale. This is nothing to do with the X-Men. I mean, she has a conversation with uh, Cyclops, but it's more to do with the Nova Corps. And this is the bit, this is where it's hooked me in. Where she's out in space and she's doing all the other stuff, other than being a mutant. So she's beyond being a mutant now, really. You know, she's a mutant in name only or in, in genetics only. The artwork by Miraculo, Miraculo, Miraculo? <laughs> Miraculo sounds like a DC villain, doesn't it? Miraculo. Anyway, uh, <laughs> his artwork's great, which did, that sucked me in straight away. He's got a very, he's got a very clean style for this kind of, storytelling you know this kind of superheroic storytelling here we go with cyclops um and i i just i just really enjoyed this i think because it was unexpected you know any comic with nova in it i'm going to be a sucker for there's not a lot of story in this issue this is an intro which again is what i needed I didn't really kind of need a, a heavy story and introducing more new characters and all the rest of it. There's no new, you know, apart from a couple of villains and blah, blah. Other than that, all this was was an introduction to where they are going to go. You know, a bit of mindless violence from the villain. Where they're going to go with this comic moving forward and with, with Phoenix. And she's basically, yeah, you know, she's just an interstellar. She's part of the, the cosmic, you know, which is why we've got Nova here. You know, she's part of the, the, the cosmic guardians. With the guardians of the galaxy absent, you know, this, this really, these are the new guardians of the galaxy in a way. You know, Nova done a telepathic uh, uh, warning, alarm, alarm signal to, to Jean. And here she comes. You know, and she's taking the energy out of suns, and she's she's sucking she's sucking the energy out of black holes, and you know all chaos is ensuing. So, yeah, and and yeah, I I will sum this up by saying an unexpected treat. I didn't expect this to go the way the way the way it did. 
you know, we've got all these other ones coming out, you know, on the subject. We've got all these. I think we all know where these are all going. But if this one can give me as much as a surprise, uh, you know, a, ni a nice surprise, I, I will be very, very happy with this new launch of X-Men comics. So, yeah, top, top, mark, top marks for that. An unexpected treat. Uh, the next one, this wasn't unexpected, it's just everything we all expect. So, we expect the Hulk to be fugitive style, loner, here he is, wandering down the road. All of these are such classic, what an opening page for a Hulk comic. This trope right here has been the same probably for about the, the best part of 50 years. Nevertheless, Nick Klein manages, you, you turn the page, and none of this is classic. None of this is classic, because now we've got this, we've got that, we've got, no. So none of this, that classic one-page trope, sucked me right in. And look at that for a doubt. This is why I've, I've got this in my top five, because look at, look at this wonderful artwork. Look at all this, what's going on. Um, this is great, and it is Nick Klein's artwork that makes it. To be fair, it is a horror comic, but it's got it's got it all going on. Um, but there is a heart to the storyline. But like I say, I, I'm 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 kind of like throwing this in because of, as a very personal choice because I just love all this stuff. I love I love this horror centric. Um, Hulk run that uh, is Philip uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson that is doing, and yeah, re re really enjoy it. I, I can't recommend this thoroughly enough. This these fourteen issues, when when Klein's on it, it but mm, anyway, that's a story for another day because Klein isn't always doing the artwork. Um, oh well, I, I, I couldn't resist this cover. Elric, to me, I don't know, he might even be a notch up. If you're going to name your favourite fantasy character, and you go, oh, I like Lord of the Rings, I like Aragorn, and then you go, oh, I like Conan the Barbarian, do you know what? I've got to admit, Elric, and I was introduced to Elric a little bit after Conan, and both characters through the comics, not the books, the comics. This nails the dark... Elric is such a dark character. This artwork as well, like fair play to uh, who's the art? It's an artist I've never heard of before. We'll we'll get we'll get to the names, but I love this dark artwork. And he's he's brooding. She's sexy. This is sword and sorcery. Look, then there's violent. Then there's a battle scene. Then there's violence. Then there's another new character. You know. The sword is sucking souls how it should. You know, he needs feeding. The sword needs feeding. Um, yeah, pure pure Elric. And I don't. But oh, the only thing I don't know is if any of this is. You know, look at this. This is wonderful artwork. All of this is wonderful artwork. And but and good storytelling. This is look kind of a, a bit of a dream sequence. Because Cimmeril was dead, and you know Stormbringer, the sword, you know blah blah, is like to suck souls. You know it needs feeding. The sword needs feeding. I just the way this is coloured as well is so. Where where is the albino uh, prince or king, whatever you want to call him? I just I, I love the way they made him almost look like a spectre, like a ghost in this artwork. I love it. Nice night scene. We don't know what she's up to. Do you know what I mean? It's all going to kick off because Elric does love a bit of Anky Panky as well. He loves his Anky Panky. That's what I mean. He's a dark. He's a dark character. Ha ha. That's not an oxymoron. But he's a dark. He's a dark soul. He's a tortured soul, and that's what I like. The fact that he really isn't a good guy. Um, and this was a great start. A, a, yeah, a really, really great start and a wonderful cover. I love that monochrome. 
and monochrome paint than you ever did. Uh, I suppose I should add. And where, where's all the names? I said I'd mention names. Uh, it's Julian Blondell done the story, and Valentine Sesha has done the art, colours, and cover. Yeah, also oh, that's his as well. Yeah, glorious. Top marks. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And along the same vein is this, where you've got a dark anti-hero, but where this is, there, there is a humour, there's a humour to the Witcher, which I enjoy. So where Elric is really dark and brooding and, and violent, I mean, the Witcher, again, we're three issues in, and it is violent, and he's had, to so he's had to team up with these characters. We've got a monster attack. We've got swearing. You know, we've got swearing. Here's his, for want of a better description, his girlfriend back at his chateau that he's had to leave, and she's under attack as well, but she's like a bit of a, um, you know, she she's not this mysterious character from issue two. Mm, love the artwork on this as well. The Italian artist on this is 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 great, and here she goes like she's defending herself now with her magic. Um, it really romps along. It it really does. So if you like if you like your Conans and your Elrics, but you're not much into The Witcher or the the, the Netflix show has put you off or whatever you think, this and it will make this five issues. It will make you know Mastan. Tunio's artwork. This will make a, a beautiful trade paperback to to keep on your to keep on your shelf. Yeah, re really, really worth it. And I'm not a Witcher fan, by the way. I am not a gamer. I didn't read the books, and I didn't like the Netflix show. But this comic, I'm thoroughly enjoying. I really am. It's a it's a little. It's it's it's, it's like a nice breath of fresh air. Uh, yeah, yeah. A nice breath of fresh air in the in the fantasy genre. And someone who needs fresh air is good old John Constantine. <laughs> he needs some fresh air. Look, he's wasted, and he look again. He's dead in America. <laughs> this this is pure pure delight. This this is as a as a Hellblazer fan from the first issue he appeared in Swamp Thing, and I will be doing a video on the first hundred issues of Hellblazer because this and his old where he appeared in Swamp what I like about this as well is where he first appeared in Swamp Thing in those early issues. Oh Alec is still here. I love I love that. I love what Spurry is doing with this. And this issue I can't I know I said there would be spoilers. And obviously I can't this aspect of the artwork to be fair and the colouring. So who's the colourist on this? Please forgive me for one for one minute. The colourist, I should write this down, shouldn't I? I should plan it a bit, but I try and keep it a little bit loosey-goosey so it's not too right. Uh, oh, Geordie Belair. Yeah, so Geordie Belair, which is a name that, you know, will not be unfamiliar to comic book aficionados, but if that's a new name to you, this is why Geordie is one of the, you know, hardest working colorists because look at this this is set back in the 1920s 1930s look at like that coloring that sepia they've used um, and then we're back into there's just one panel of modern day and then another panel of modern day but I, I just like this this sepia yeah very very nicely done old Old Hollywood, old LA, um, in the bars, you know, just evoking um, a mood. Very, very, very nicely done. You know, here's Dream, he turns up. And, but this issue, without giving away spoilers, it really ramps up the fact that I think they've lulled us into a full sense of security for six issues. And in this seventh issue, By the end of it, Constantine Constantine is back. 
constant ties back. Here's a bit of bloody violence, but this is on the behalf of this character who Dream has said you've got to follow him. You know, he's the one that's going to lead you to the grain, you know, my grain of sand, whether he's there after his bag or whatever it is. But yeah, there, there's Constantine going, no violence. And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's all right, all right. And bang, 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 bang. That motif that goes through this issue. A, beauti a beautifully dark and horrific and sometimes, you know, se sexual. It's all in here. It's all in here. Spurrier is, having, Spurrier is having a ball. He, this Constantine is more Ennis's. You know, if we're going to get really detailed about it, this is more of Ennis's uh, Constantine than Delano's because, no, that's a bit unfair. No, now, now I've said it, now the words come out. No, I, I think he's doing, yeah, he, he's paying homage and respect to both iterations. Uh, of of Constantine, which is the which is the political and the demonic, like the supernatural. So, oh, I just fucking enjoyed it. It's a, just a great read. It really is. And if you're not picking it up, I think it's going to be ten issues. I think, or it might be eight. Anyway, this black label stuff, well worth it. Yeah, well worth it. And so we come to the book of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this, look at this cover, look. <laughs> I had no clue. I had no clue about this. This come at me from left field. And here we go. There's a superhero, obviously a superhero, or an idiot dressed as a superhero. But we, we don't know what's going on, do we? Phil Weston's artwork. This is the best I've seen his artwork. Absolute, I've got a bush like that in my garden, by the way, and it's it's a real detailed representation of that. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> and then, here we go. <laughs> oh, that's how you start a comic. <laughs> this is how you start a comic. But this book is about a, a home, like the... The Paranoid Gardens of the title is a care home. And here's our main character, and she doesn't know why she's there. She's kind of lost her memory. And the mystery ensues from there. What I can't get over is this sumptuous Phil Western artwork. It's the best. This Look at this stuff. It's a bit like, um, oh, uh, what's the name on Helen of uh, Windhorn? Uh, is it Bill Quist, Bill uh, Everly, whatever? Uh, yeah, so, apologies if I've got a name wrong. But you know who I mean on Helen of Windhorn. There isn't a panel. A panel? Yeah. <clears throat> Look at the detail on every single panel. A pure, a pure delight. Because there's no explanation. Look, look how many words there are. There is no explanation, but we do know we're in a care home because we're given references. But, oh, hold on. That's an alien or a monster. Then we're in the pool. And we're being told that the healing power of the gardens, we're on special ground. But, so she's waiting for... a. Uh, this is a disabled toilet. We're waiting for a, a, a geriatric alien stroke monster, or I don't know, mutant. No, he's doing his, tr he's, he's doing his, pulling his trousers up and doing his zip up that with all his little sucky fingers. Yeah. And then there's this little, there's this little bird, and she has to, during the course of this, the next two pages, you know, she, you know, the bird's in trouble. She holds it and then lets it go and it flies off. So it's obviously been in trouble. I don't know if you had the shits or what. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> no, I'm being facetious now. Anyway, then she gets in trouble with the enter the regular entertainer that comes to this care home. And this is where it all goes bonkers. 
this is where we were introduced into the wider world. So we do have the traditional humans drinking tea, doing a puzzle, ventriloquist entertainer in a care home, but then we've got this and we've got that and we've got that. It, it, mm, yeah, yeah, that old box of frogs doesn't know where to jump. And then she suddenly, so our main character that we're following, she decides to do a sock puppet to take the, the, the Mickey out of the entertainer that isn't entertaining anyone. And they he gets angry because she's entertaining them more with her sock puppet. <laughs> this is how mad it is. And this is when you think it can't get any weirder. So she's getting in trouble by doing a sock puppet. Then the, for want of a better term, the matron of the, the home, the manager, the manageress, must be a manageress because look, she's been drawn that way. Um, and look, but look at this angle of artwork. Look at this one panel of artwork with the ventriloquist dummy on the floor laughing. And he's angry at her and you've got an alien. I mean, just look at the madness contained in that one panel. And then we're back to the alien, alien monsters again. And then look, at the end of the second page, we've got a ghost mop. We've got a ghost cleaner. <laughs> and then we get a super a, a new inmate a new inmate's being brought in and i will leave it there i will leave it there as the new inmate gets brought in and you can see what's going on and yeah we're, we're none the wiser by the end of it you can't wait for issue two honestly it, it's what a what a great read it really 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 was so guys, we have got to do cover of the week. Now, this was a kind of, this is bagged and balded, by the way, by Dark Horse. They send you a, a, a board. And where is it? Um, so they said, th th this comic is bagged and balded. Look, with the barcode so you can do the pricing, you know, if you're using the Wasset. So fair play, because it's quite a delicate little thing. You know, you that you need to have the reveal. <gasps> There's a superhero <laughs> on a stretcher. Elric, that is just a darkly brooding, that, that sums up Elric for me. That's a beautiful illustration, that is. Um, I'm going to throw in the Phoenix because, you know, it's all fire. It's fire and it's her, it's red hair and, you know, it's got it all going on. I thought this... This won't be cover of the week, but I've got to include it because I like the, the madness of it. I just, I just like the deconstruct, you know, li the literal decon deconstructionist idea of this. And you've got the Mr. Milka bitch and you've got Batmite there. Look, I, I love it. I love it. But it's too... It's too nuanced. It's a great comic book cover for aficionados, but these are the kind of covers. Look, when you've got Phoenix and Witchblade fighting for your attention, guys, come on. Uh, fighting for your attention on the newsstands. And then you've got Wonder Woman tied up. No, no, come on, keep it clean, keep it clean. But this does hark back to the bondage era. Of Wonder Woman covers back in the and I know listen I'm not a DC uh, aficionado but you I do know that there were certain covers that are, are now deemed inappropriate and I'm not saying that's inappropriate but I do think I, I don't know I just like the fact that they're you know Jesus Christ superstar and all that and I just thought that was well that wasn't great artwork by the way in this but uh as covers go, that looks awesome. Nothing to do with anything. It's just a good, it's just a good picture of a Viking, really, isn't it? Um, and I, I'm, I am just going to include this. Um, because I think, I do think it was brave of DC Comics. I know it's Black Label. Nevertheless, these are owned by Warner Brothers. 
and a wasted man, a half naked wasted guy with a fag in his hand and this going on by the side of his bed. Um, and, and all the, I, I just thought that was a brave, I thought that was a brave cover. Um, but not one, not one that would immediately attract you to the, neither is that, although it's, it is a striking image, there's not a lot going on. Um, although it was a, a great week for content, cover of the week is difficult because these are all quite static images. It can't be world's finest. Like, you know, it can't be Elric and his, his new girlfriend posing. It can't, it can't be that. But can it be Sarah Pazzini and a guy with a samurai sword? You know, this, this is Silvestri of a gun. Can it be that? Who are these characters? We're in New York. Like, what's going on? There's a, there's a lot going on in that. There's not... And that can't be cover of the week, can it? Although I like the reveal... As beautiful as the reveal is, we wouldn't have seen this on the newsstand, would we? Or, and I don't know if they've done a, a cover that's just like that, but it, like I say, it comes bagged and balded, so you can't even get into it. So, guys, I, I don't know if this is going to be a controversial one, but let me know if you disagree. Please let me know, but I think it's got to be this. This is the one that's got a lot more going on than any of the others. You've got magic. Hot babe, samurai swords, a gun, you know, zombie skulls. It's got the most going on for me, to be fair. This is the this is the kind of cover that would have got me involved. Like, oh yes, samurai swords, oh yeah, this is magic. Yeah, all fighting monsters, and then there's a cop involved. Yeah, badge, gun, and who? who's the mysterious old man? He's obviously... The so that is the cover of the week and if you have followed me this far thank you so much and um until next time i will bid you all i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed this one guys as, as much as i did and until next time i will bid all of you comic book geeks and collectors and readers i will bid you all adios Thank <laughs> you.